Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to do a basic start-stop control on our conveyor. In this video, we're going to be using Industrial Concepts Conveyor Trainer, and we're going to be using our Compact Logics Trainer. And I'll put links to both of those in the description. And we're going to start with a new project, and we have a 1769 L16 ER BB1B. And we're just going to call this Start Stop. And then we need to select our number of expansion modules, which currently we have no expansion modules on our PLC, so we'll put zero. Then we're going to go into our main task, main program, and then there is our main routine. And from our wiring exercise, we have the green button on input eight, and we have the red button on input nine. Also, our red button is normally closed. So we are going to bring down and examine on, and we are going to look at local colon one colon i dot data dot eight. And let's go ahead and give it a description of the green button. Then let's bring down an output energize. And our conveyor is local colon one colon o dot data dot zero. So let's go ahead and put a description of it as conveyor. And actually, hey, why don't we go ahead and download this program while we have it like this so we can just see a nice momentary start stop of the conveyor. Now, if you need any help downloading your program or I went too fast to create a program, just look down in the description. We have videos on all of that. So now if we press the green button, our conveyor is going to run. When we let off of it, it stops. Very similar to what we did with our hardwired exercise in the previous video. But obviously, who wants to sit here and hold their finger on this the whole time? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the stop button to make a seal in. So let's go ahead and edit this wrong here. And let's add a branch. And bring down an examine on for this conveyor output. And then bring down another examine on. And this time we're going to look at local colon one colon I dot data dot nine. And that is that red button. So let's label it as the red button. And we'll go ahead and accept that edit. And now when we press our green button, the conveyor starts. But when we let off of it, it continues to run. And then if we press the stop button, it stops. Now I'm not going to go step by step through how that program works because we have a video on that already. So I'll put a link to it in the description. But I do want to take this moment to clarify or really emphasize what happens on power up if you do this method compared to a latch unlatch. So I'm going to hit the start button again. And then I am going to kill the power to our trainer. Okay, I have the power back on, and you see it takes a little while for the compact logics to boot up. So take your time, wait until you do have a solid green run light here, and then let's see what the conveyor does. Okay, it's back and run, and our conveyor did not start. So let's go back online, and now we're gonna make a latch unlatch. Now do this exactly in the order I do, because we're actually going to bring this rung back for you know, just to show a few other things. So first, let's go ahead and create a new rung. And then let's copy our green button. And we'll paste it down here. And then let's get a latch instruction. And let's drag down that address for our conveyor. Now let's drag another rung down. Then let's drag down and examine it all. And we'll drag down that red button address. And then let's drag down an unlatch and drag down the conveyor address. So this is a latch unlatch method of starting and stopping the conveyor. 
Now we still have this other code up here. So first, highlight the wrong and hit Control X, or you can right click and cut the wrong. And then let's accept those edits. Now don't use that delete key. I want that cut because we're going to put it back in. So now we press our green button, the conveyor starts. We press the red button, the conveyor stops. Exactly the same as our other method. But now let's hit the green button and let's power down our PLC. Okay, now we're powering back up and it does take again a little while for the Compact Logics PLC to come on, but I think that actually emphasizes the difference in this because think about it, you just turned it back on. Now you're working around trying to see, okay, what's going on here? What could have been there? Was there something wrong with this sensor? Whatever. Maybe now we're even leaning on the conveyor, thinking about it. And all of a sudden, the conveyor starts. So that's the difference between using a latch unlatch versus an OTE during power up. Is the OTE when you cycle power is going to be off when the PLC comes back on. But the latch unlatch is not. It's going to continue where it left off. And we have a whole video that actually talks about pre-scan conditions and why that happens. But I wanted to take a moment since we had the conveyor here, because I think it gives you a little more realization that, oh my goodness, this thing may start. Now I'm not saying it's good or bad either way, because let's say it was a cooling pump. We probably want it to start back up. But you know, if it's a conveyor and an operator could be standing right there, or maybe the power was out and maintenance is like, well, let's go ahead and get some work done. And yes, I know they should have everything locked out when they're working on it. But when the power's out, especially, there's a chance they may not. Now I said, you know, leave that rung in your clipboard because now let's go back online with our PLC and let's paste that rung right back in. And I'm gonna drag it right back up at the top. All right, now it looks exactly like it did before we deleted the rung. Now let's say that we say, you know, I think I wanna use the latch unlatch instead of this OTE, but I don't wanna delete this rung because I, I may need it again. Obviously we're saying this rung was somehow more complicated than what I have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it into an unused subroutine. So I'm gonna right click our main program, add new routine. And we're just gonna call this unused. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to control X and I'm going to go over here to my unused routine and control V. This routine is not called anywhere. So this OTE here is not scanned. So we'll go ahead and put that in the PLC and go back to our main routine and you'll see that all right, green button starts, red button stops, just like it did. And you see, we have our green bars going down the side. We probably should do a video that really clarifies what that's doing. But mainly on this unused one, we don't have our green bars, which typically people say means it isn't scanned. So when we had cycle power before in our latch, the conveyor started back up. So now we'll start it, and I'm gonna cycle power on the PLC again. Okay, the PLC is coming back online, and the conveyor starts back up just like it did before. Okay, now let's do one more thing just so we can see this. As let's say we want to test that unused routine occasionally. So I'm going to add a rung and I'm going to put a JSR or jump subroutine and we are going to jump to that unused. And then we're going to put an examine if closed, and we're just going to put test unused. Now I said we needed to do a video on the green bars, and yeah, this is kind of rabbit trailing down because I want to make sure you see a big difference in how these programs look now. Is this is not being called right now. I have a test unused, which says it could be called. And this has the green bars, just like we talked about. 
Now this one isn't being called right now, but it does have the green bars now. So these green bars means that it could be called, not that it is being called or scanned. That's maybe I should use the word scan. So currently this is not being scanned because we have false conditions going to our JSR. But all right, let's start our motor now and let's cycle power again. Okay, so in previous ones, with the latch unlatch, the conveyor has started back up. But now we have this program that could call that OTE, even though it isn't. And when we get our solid run light going, our conveyor doesn't start. And that's because of that pre-scan condition that we've talked about in previous videos. And I guess I should go ahead and touch on that, but still you should look in the description. We have a video that really goes into detail about it. But on pre-scan, all the OTEs that are accessible in a PLC program, whether they're scanned or not, doesn't matter. If they could be scanned, get a zero written to them. Whereas a latch and unlatch during pre-scan, nothing happens. And that's what's happening here. Now let's do one more thing, because I think this is a good exercise. As a lot of people tell me, well, if you use an AFI, it completely disables it. Well, it doesn't completely disable it. It simply makes it always false. So logic-wise, it'll always be false, but it's not disabled. So if we change our instruction here on our test unused, and we just highlight the symbol and double click, let's type AFI. And now let's send that to it. So first let's look at our green lines again. So we have our green obviously on our main routine, but now this rung is completely disabled. There's no way that JSR can ever jump to our unused routine. But when we go here, we do have the green line. So let's go ahead and start our conveyor one more time. And we're gonna cycle power on our PLC. All right, our green run light is on and it is not running. Now, I said that was the last one, but I just had a thought. And honestly, I don't know how this will work. Is let's go back online and let's go back to our main routine and let's highlight rung two and hit the delete key. Now this, I didn't just delete this rung. Right now we got lowercase d's, which means that it's just deleted in our program. And what I wanna do is I am going to, well, first we're gonna accept that pending rung edit. Now we don't want to use this finalize button here because we're not going to get this fully in. So now we have capital D's and that means that it is in the PLC. But next, I want to test accepted rung edit, which mainly now we're not having the green scan bar here. And if we go over to our unused, we don't have a green scan bar here. So let's see what happens now that we have it this way. So I'm gonna start my conveyor. And now I'm gonna cycle power again. Now we're waiting for it to power back up. Now I get the feeling the conveyor will start back up because we didn't have the green lines that people say means it's scanning the routine. Again, that just means it could scan the routine. So I get the feeling as soon as our green light comes on, our conveyor is gonna start. But I was wrong. Okay. Oh, no, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> I just didn't quite wait long enough. So yeah, the conveyor did start again. Okay, so that was an interesting little rabbit trail of you know how PLC scan works. Is all right, since we don't have our green bar here, which means that the rung is not capable of being scanned, we also don't have our green bar here. And that means that pre-scan doesn't affect it. So yeah, I know I, I was this video was supposed to just be a quick start stop video. In fact, I don't even know what I'll title this thing now. But the big summary here is one, you just saw two ways to start and stop a motor. We can use the output energize, or we can use a combination of the latch unlatch. And in the case of the output energize, when you cycle power, if the conveyor was running before, it will not be running when you power back up. In the case of the latch unlatch, it will resume running when you power back up. And yeah, we kind of went into a neat segue on program flow and the fact that, okay, if there's an OTE anywhere that 
could be scanned, it's still going to write a zero during pre-scan and stop our conveyor. So I hope this video has been interesting. Please take a moment to hit that like button and put your thoughts on it in the comments. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.